Welcome everyone to the May 19th, 2021 edition of The Rundown. I am Ware Wendell and I am the Executive Director of Texas Watch. Texas Watch is a nonpartisan nonprofit that advocates on a range of issues related to safety, accountability, and justice. We stand up for consumers, policyholders, patients, and the public at the Texas Capitol. And we are so fortunate to do this work. I am joined by a great team at Texas Watch. Christian Benavides is our digital content director and Kelly Taft is our development and operations director. And we exist to educate and engage you in the fight for your rights. And each and every one of you has been doing such a wonderful job of this session and making your voices heard, making sure that lawmakers are, are listening to you and not just to the lobbyists who are down at the Texas Capitol each and every day. In this edition of the rundown, I want to focus on uh, just three bills. Throughout session, we've been talking about a lot of bills, but I wanna really focus our attention on three bills that are still moving in the process right now, and they give you an opportunity to make positive change this session. The first one is House Bill 359, uh, this is a bill that was brought by Chairman Charlie Guerin in the Texas House. It passed through the House with very strong bipartisan support, and it's being carried in the, in the Senate by Senate, uh, Senator Brian Hughes. House Bill 359 would help you get what you pay for when you purchase uninsured and underinsured motorist coverage. This is what's called first-party insurance coverage that's there to help you if you are hit by someone um, on our roads who doesn't have insurance at all or doesn't have enough insurance. So, you know, our minimum liability insurance policy these days is just $30,000 in coverage. And cars cost more and more each, each year. I know trucks cost more and more each year. It costs more and more to receive medical care. And so you may find yourself in a situation where you don't have enough coverage in place to protect you if someone hits you and injures you. So you can purchase this product that is supposed to be there to fill in the gap, to step in and to make up the difference between the insurance that the at-fault driver has and your total damages. The problem that we have here is that a Texas Supreme Court case called Brainerd versus Trinity makes it hard sometimes to get what you're, what you're owed under that uninsured and underinsured motorist policy. That Supreme Court case gives your insurance company the ability to tell you that you have to go to court, you have to hire a lawyer, hire experts, go to court and get a judgment against the at-fault driver before they are on the hook to pay you. Now stop and think about that. You've paid your premiums year after year. You rightfully expect for them to pay policy benefits when you need them not a year or two or three years down the line after you've had to go hire an attorney. And uh, we just think that this creates unnecessary cost and delay. The insurance companies before this Supreme Court decision would pay these claims. They know how to investigate and adjust these claims. They do it every day in many different lines of insurance and many different types of claims. So they can do that here as well. So House Bill 359 will simply get insurance companies back to paying these claims instead of forcing you to go through unnecessary cost and delay. It's a great bill, but it needs your help. We need to make sure that the Senate is hearing from you right now so that this bill can get referred to committee and can get heard before the deadline. So we need to get a lot of public attention on House Bill 359. We need to support Senator Brian Hughes with this bill. You can do that on our website, texaswatch.org. Uh, go to the ACT page and you'll see uh, the opportunity to, to raise your voice in support of House Bill 359. Fantastic bill. It's going to protect policyholders all across our state. Came out of the House with, as I said, very strong bipartisan support, and we need to give it a push to get it through the Texas Senate. So now is the time. You can send an email. We make it really easy for you to do that. You just enter your name and address and our system gets your letter to 
um, your senator, to your state rep, to the governor, to the lieutenant governor. Um, so take a minute to do that. You can change the letter any way you want to. We have some suggested language there, but it's your voice. Change it any way you like so that it's in your words, but it truly takes just a few seconds to make your voice heard and it can help you a lot and it can protect your pocketbook to make sure that premiums aren't being charged for policies that don't pay out later. You know, it's one thing for insurance companies to take premiums. Sometimes they don't like to pay that money back to you in claims. And we want to make sure that this is fair and that this is balanced and it's a two-way street. Please support House Bill 359. Let me talk about another insurance bill that is live at the Texas Capitol. Um, this is a pro policyholder bill. It came through the House with strong support again, and now it's in the Texas Senate and it needs your help. This is House Bill 2534. It was carried in the House by State Representative Travis Clardy from East Texas. He did a great job of guiding this bill through the Texas House, and now it's in the Senate. Um, Senator Cesar Blanco um, is sponsoring the bill in the Senate, and we need your help again to raise its profile to make sure that this bill gets uh, referred and heard right now. So House Bill 2534 will make the auto insurance appraisal process fair. It's a bit of a mouthful, so let me break it down a little bit for you. So almost all of us right now, if you read your auto insurance policy, you will see that there is a clause in there that talks about appraisal. Now, I mean, we hear about appraisal on Antiques Roadshow and things like that. Let's talk about what insurance appraisal is. Auto insurance appraisal is a process where if you can't agree with your insurance company on the proper cost to repair your property, in this case, your vehicle, you can hire your own appraiser. This is an expert who understands value. The insurance company can hire their own appraiser and those appraisers can basically compare notes on what the proper amount of the loss is here, what the proper value of this claim is. If they can't agree, most of these appraisal clauses have a process where the two appraisers can bring a third appraiser in um, and they're called the umpire. And that umpire is neutral and they are there to decide this, to decide the dispute, to figure out what the proper value is for that claim. And in doing so, we can get a resolution to many of these claims early on in the process. The problem is that some insurance companies play games with how they time the appraisal process. They may wait, they may hide behind the log, lay behind the log until you're deep into the dispute with them. Maybe you're into litigation, maybe you're in a process called mediation, which is where you're trying to negotiate your, your legal claim with them through the help of a neutral third party, this time called a mediator. And, and then they may say, you know what, we don't like the amount that you're putting on the table and we're now gonna send this process to appraisal. All it does at that point is it creates additional delay. The whole point of appraisal is to reduce delay and to reduce cost and to try to get a resolution to these disputes. So House Bill 2534 will restore appraisal to its intended purpose. It gives the parties a reasonable amount of time to start the appraisal process. It's within 90 days of proof of loss. So this is where you have sent your information to the insurance company and you've showed them, hey, this is what happened to my truck. This is what happened to my car. These are the estimates that I have that, that talk about how much it's gonna cost to repair it. Um, within basically a three month period, either you or the insurance company needs to start the appraisal process. It's gonna keep the insurance companies from playing these delay games, which I feel are just designed to grind you down to make you desperate and to take a lowball offer later on in the dispute. I don't think that's right. And uh, the Texas House, I think, agreed with us. That's why they voted to support it. Um, but we need the Senate to step up and do the same. So please take a minute to support House Bill 2534. Again, you can send an email. We make it easy for you to do that. You can make a phone call. We have talking points there with information about the bill that will support you. Our system gets you again to your lawmakers. Um, tell the governor, tell the lieutenant governor, tell your senator to please support this bill. 
If you're on Twitter, you can even uh, tweet at your lawmaker. Again, we have an automated system to help you with this. We invested in these new digital tools to help you make your voice heard loud and clear. So we need to help House Bill 2534. Great bill that's going to make the auto insurance appraisal process fair. It's going to make it a two-way street. Uh, either side can use it. And uh, it's going to get a lot of those delay games out of the equation here. It's going to keep insurance companies from gaming this system. So please support House Bill 2534 at texaswatch.org. Again, you can go to our ACT page. It's right up there at the top. You'll see it. Great bill. And uh, we thank Senator Blanco for sponsoring it in the Senate. And we thank uh, Representative Travis Clardy again for all of his efforts in getting it through the House. Let me talk about one more just vital bill. And I, I use that word with purpose. This is a bill that's going to help to protect life and the lives of our veterans. These are our fighting men and women who served honorably overseas, whether it was in Iraq or Afghanistan, other operating bases overseas, who have been exposed to toxins on our bases through no fault of their own. There were contracts in place for contractors to incinerate our waste on these bases. If they had incinerated the waste, it's a cleaner burning process. But decisions were made at the top to not do that. Maybe that cost a little bit more money. Maybe they could save some money if they just pushed everything into open pits, doused it in fuel, whether it was diesel fuel, jet fuel, whatever they had on hand, and set it on fire just about every day. These are what you've heard me talk about as burn pits. And what happened is all of these hazardous materials overseas on our bases, whether they were mattresses, paint, batteries, munitions, um, just anything you can imagine, was set on fire. And of course, what happens then is those toxins are aerosolized, right? They're spread into the air in very small, fine particles. And our, our soldiers breathed that in deep into their lungs day after day. There are some internal documents that came out that showed that the military leadership uh, on certain days where like maybe a general was visiting, they would say, hey, let's power down the burn pits. We don't want the general to have to breathe this stuff. Well, that tells me that they knew that this was bad and that they were putting our soldiers at risk. What we're seeing is that our soldiers are coming back and many of them, unfortunately, are getting very aggressive cancers that you typically do not see in that population of folks in their 20s, 30s, or 40s. Also very debilitating lung diseases. So we need to help them. We need to help coordinate their care through the VA. And we can do that here in Texas. Last session, we worked with the leading organization in the state and in the country, Burn Pits 360. Uh, they are the leaders on this issue. Rosie and Leroy Torres are incredible advocates and we're here to help support them. So we all work together to get a registry put in place to help our veterans here in Texas track their symptoms over time. It's a way to, to organize the data, to organize the information and to show I was deployed here on this, bait, on this base from this date to this date. And this is where my symptoms started. And this is what's happened over time. And the way that our registry here in Texas is structured, you know, if there's been a change in health, a decline in health, or even God forbid a death, family members can update the registry. That's really important because that then allows them to coordinate with the VA to show these were the symptoms, this is when it happened, and to get care from the VA. So we have an opportunity here this session to get some funding to that registry so we can fund it, so we can have operating costs to allow the state agency to stand up the registry, publicize it to our veteran population. By the way, we have the second highest population of veterans here in Texas over, I believe, 1.6 1, 1. million veterans in Texas. So we can be leaders here in the country in doing this. We've just got to get it some money. House Bill 35, uh, I'm sorry, House Bill 3957, 3957, was brought by Representative Abel Herrero, who did a wonderful job getting that bill through 
uh, the Texas House, again, with very strong bipartisan support. Uh, Senator Chuy Hinojosa is carrying the bill in the Senate. And both of these gentlemen were instrumental last session in getting the registry uh, written into law. So we thank both of them for all of their efforts last session. We need to make sure that we're supporting Senator uh, Hinojosa's efforts in the Senate this session. So we need we need your support. We need you to raise your voices. Uh, we have a lot of growth here. We set some goals in terms of making sure that, that our veterans were taken care of. And we need more of you to take a minute, again, to send a letter, uh, to make a phone call, to tweet at your lawmakers, to raise the profile of this issue so that we can make sure that House Bill 3957 gets passed. What it does is it allows the state to create um, some license plates that honor our burn pits veterans, uh, again, raising the profile for them. And a portion, a large portion actually of those license plates would go towards funding the operating costs of this registry. So at a time where the economy is trying to recover from COVID, we're not raising taxes. This is all voluntary. You know, you can choose to, to get one of these license plates. People who care about our veterans can show their support that way. And a large portion, like I said, of the dollars that are raised through that effort are going to go towards funding this registry. A really important bill, House Bill 39. 57. If you will please take a minute to support that effort. It is so important to our fighting men and women. Uh, they took care of us, and now it's our chance and our duty to take care of them. So please help our veterans who are, are fighting to restore their health, help their families as well. Let's make sure that they get the care that they need by supporting House Bill 3957. We thank you for everything that you do to make your voices heard, um, I have to brag on you. We are so close. We're knocking on the door of 12,000 actions this legislative session. When I say actions, what I mean is sending those letters, making those phone calls, tweeting. That is, we're, we're on pace to double what we did last session. And I have to confess, at the beginning of the session, I wondered if we were going to get there because with the pandemic, Everybody's trying to sort their lives out, and um, and a lot of people are under stress right now with their work and you know making it all work with with their kids and school and and it's hard sometimes to get people to focus on what's happening at the Capitol. And you have done a wonderful job, each and every one of you, of making your voices heard. We're so close. Let's get to twelve thousand. We're just a few hundred away from doing that. So if you'll go again to our act page, TexasWatch.org. Uh, go to the ACT page and uh, make sure that you've taken action. We can get to 12,000 and we can make sure again that lawmakers are hearing from you. You elected them. You hired them. They work for you. They don't work for lobbyists. They work for you. So make sure that they uh, remember that and take action. Again, we can make positive change here on three really important bills to restore your rights as a policyholder with House Bill 359 to make sure that auto insurance appraisal is fair and that insurance companies aren't gaming that process and creating cost and delay for you. Again, that's House Bill 2534. And taking care of our veterans who took care of us, who put their lives on the lines, who, who risked everything for us in House Bill 3957. So as you see our content, whether it's on Facebook, YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to our channel on YouTube. If you want to see everything that we're doing, YouTube is the very best place to see that because we put it up there. So much of our work these days is done through videos. So get, be the early bird. Subscribe on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Make sure you're following us everywhere. Uh, we have a great podcast. We've been releasing a lot of podcast episodes Christian Benavides heads all of that up. It's called Texas Tells, T-E-L-L-S. And we're everywhere that you get your podcasts. So make sure you subscribe there. Just put Texas Tells in quotes or search Texas Watch and you'll find us. If you like the podcast, take a minute to rate it highly. I hope you do. I hope you find it to be valuable information. That helps us with the algorithms, making sure that we show up in the search results. And, um, and then if you can support us, financially at any amount if it's a dollar if it's five dollars if you can support us monthly at 25 dollars a month um, you can get uh, this lapel pin that you see me wearing i support texas watch as a monthly giver because i believe strongly in our work it represents and commemorates the 300 spartans who held the line at thermopylae and it shows what a small group of committed 
people can do. Uh, so that's our that's our 300 campaign. We need to get to 300 monthly contributors uh, for the long term success of Texas Watch. Helps me as the executive director in terms of budgeting and deciding where we can put our resources and where we can help to educate and engage the public even more in the fight for their rights. And even if you can't give it $25 a month, if you can give it any amount per month, that just helps me budget for the future. So thank you for your support there. We have a donate page. You'll see it again at the top of texaswatch.org. And I want to say uh, before we close this edition of the rundown that we lost a, a, a true champion of justice. You know, at Texas Watch, we, th- we, we, we stand for three core values. We stand for safety, accountability, and justice. And we talk a lot about our courts and protecting our courts because our courts are where you have a level playing field. There are no lobbyists in our courts. There are advocates for either side. And through that adversarial process, the truth comes to light. And then that, that goes before a jury of your peers Ordinary, everyday citizens sit in judgment of those disputes, and they decide um, how to how to weigh the credibility of the witnesses and apply the facts to the law. And in doing so, they are the guardians of our communities. They they enforce the rules of the road, if you will. And so, those advocates within that system uh, are so important to our system of justice. And we lost Broadus Spivey who was one of the top advocates, one of the top attorneys in our state. He was the state bar president. Um, He tried more lawsuits than anyone that I know and probably more than anyone that I will ever know. A longtime lawyer, uh, lived in Austin, but practiced all over the state. And uh, we had the honor of interviewing him uh, recently. So check out that interview. It's our In Conversation series with Broadus Spivey. Broadus was, I always describe him as, as the real life Atticus Finch, except better. He was, he was a happy warrior in, in Wordsworth's conception. He cared a lot about people and making sure that people's voices were heard within our, our justice system. And I think if you asked anyone who, who he helped as a client, if you ha- asked anyone that he tried a case with as co-counsel, and I bet if you asked all of his opposing counsel as well and judges that he had appeared before, he was a true gentleman and he set the standard. So this edition of the rundown is dedicated to the memory of my, my friend, Broadus Spivey, who did it better than anyone I know and embodied justice and uh, ran a very, very good race and lived a, a great life. So Broadus will never be replaced, but all of us who care about justice, you and me, uh, we can we can try our best to live up to his example. So make sure that you watch that interview with, with Broadus Spivey. Um, thank you for everything that you do. We will be back with you here very shortly. We have just uh, about a week and a half left at the Texas Capitol. So just know we're doing everything we can to help Texas families. And uh, we'll be back in touch here very soon. Thank you very much. Take care.